Hi guys, so today I want to try out the um, pink and mane dyes that you guys are really excited about. I'm excited about just, you know, they're pink and beautiful. Um, I will have links in the description box, which will, be, which will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you were to purchase items through those links. A lot of these items that I showed you guys in my haul are still on sale. They were in the sales section. Um, and they added a lot of new ones. Like this one's not there anymore. I think it's probably... Oh, let that focus it's probably sold out but this one is there and the stamp and die combos and i forgot to mention that last time are 12 dollars and things like this i think like are eight or ten these are 10 bucks for this layer dies like these so really great pricing on them and they still have some of these available i think today i'm going to use this one this one's on the higher side but i really want to use it so even though it's in the sales section um it makes a standard a two size card front that you can layer up in different ways. So I'm going to use that today. I will be using the slim dies very, the slim line dies very soon. These are the two that I had picked up, the with sympathy and the sunburst. Um, they have some other really cute ones, but I will probably pick those up very soon in a different um, order, obviously. And then I was thinking, what do I want to put on top of this? Because obviously this is going to be kind of quick. You know, we just cut them out and layer them up. I'm going to use my tonic um, stamp club. Um, I think because why not this is the uh, happy hibiscus this did sell out um, their stamp club from yesterday the shoot for the moon sold out already um, I don't know if they'll bring any more back in I haven't seen that happen in a, like this whole time that they've had the stamp club like it'll last a few days maybe even weeks I know this one was still available yeah, even after I purchased it in November it recently sold out it must have sold out within the last day or two or maybe people picked up both of them you know since they already won Maybe this one from before, but it was still there, and then they got the new one. I don't know, but um, this is sold out, um, and now all the other stamp clubs are. But uh, I was really surprised by that because this was in stock, you know, just a couple days ago, and then the other one was just, <clears throat> excuse me, gone. So less than 24 hours. <laughs> so people were really interested in it. <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm gonna do is grab some papers, and we're gonna cut these dies out, and we're gonna layer them up, and then I think I'm gonna use this middle section just to put like some kind of pretty flower. Thing on top of here of course I'm gonna color them in with some kind of alcohol ink markers and um, and yeah so uh, let me grab some papers and we'll get started okay so I picked out these colors they were actually in a recollections pack so I think this it was already tropical as it is I thought this was orange because it looks very orange when it's compared to the green but it's really like a bright coral color it's kind of interesting and then this raspberry color and so what I want to do is some different layering with this I think um, they have some examples there, obviously, on their site. I did want to mention they are having some issues with PayPal in which if you use PayPal to order on Pink and Main, and this depends when you're watching this, <laughs> um, after it comes back from PayPal, your order, it might say that it did not process, but it did process, and you'll see the order in your account, like, under orders, and it's processed. But for some reason, when it goes to PayPal and comes back to their site, it says that, and they know that, and they're trying to fix it. If you don't want to bother with that, I would say just use, you know, a card or different, pay a different way than PayPal, just so you don't, you know, get confused there but again depends on when you're watching this that that would work or not um let me see so whenever I ordered that did that to me too so I'm like okay next time I'll just use a card which there are some things right now in their sales section that I'm like I need to get those and so I'll be doing that soon this is just tape and I'm not sure why I cut it the way I did but I did so there we go um so I want to see if these run through the marquee or not And let's see, they feel very much like metal, like tin metal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I have other dies where if I go like this, that's what they sound like, but there it is. I had this piece that's literally already cut down to like A2 size, and I'm like, oh no. So I want to use this. I don't know if it's going to work for my purposes. Um, I do want the bright green to be cut from the, the thinnest strip, and I want two of this because I'm going to layer them up in a fun way, and we'll see what happens. Um, I think I might also want two of a different color, but to start off, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do two of this skinny and the green. Like I said, this paper's already cut down to it, so I'm going to be very careful to use it. And as you can see, it'll be right edge to edge. Um, I'm going to use the larger strip, these larger, thicker ones, to be the background. So I'm going to use that for this color, kind of raspberry color. And the medium color I'm going to cut out of um, this guy. And I don't remember if I only want to use that one or if I'm gonna cut it out from another one. But either way, when I come back, I'll show you the different layers I have. Um, my curiosity is if this fits through the marquee. So let me see if I have a folder here. It's, well, see the cutting edge ends a little bit inside of that, but, huh. 
You know what I'm saying? Like this is the edge, but the cutting part is right down the center. I don't know. I will try it out and I will report back. But when I come back, I'll have all my um, strips cut or backgrounds okay, cut. I was just trying this one real quick. And I just put that green piece in it seems to work just fine. Just get it right in the center though, you know what I'm saying? As far as the edge to edge, I would center it just so, because that's basically what I did and, and we're good. So, all right, okay, I'll continue cutting these out and I'll be right back. Okay, I got quite a little mess here. You can also use these little strips that come out later, you know, if you want to use them on their own. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention to that, so I didn't keep them like in any kind of way, but um, I do have a standard A2 size piece of paper here, so that's eight and a half by five and a half. I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter. And that'll be our card base. So I'm trying to make this simple because I know I'm gonna have to do some coloring and that's gonna take some time for me. So there's that. And then I cut out tons of these because I changed my mind kind of what I wanted to do a little bit. Let me clear this up from these other pieces. But what I was trying to say is if you keep these and you kind of pay attention to how you're doing it, um, you can then come in later and put these in on your card base, you know? You just have to line them up the right way. I don't know which one came next or where this even came from. Like that, you know? And then the next one, the next one. And you have strips that you can put behind your card. Use them up a different way. Let me pop this guy out. So I want to do kind of like a plaid and probably overkill plaid here. So let me put these to the side. I want to start with this one in the back. So I am going to glue this down just to have it already ready there. And it's basically straight up a standard A2 size. As you can see, it pretty much mats the whole front of the card. Of course, I cut this with my guillotine, so it's a little bit, you know, a little fun <laughs> how that happens. Where I need to start using a new one of these guys. Oopsie. Um, I pretty much killed the other bottle. So this is a new bottle of Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. Hope you guys had a great holiday. I know the new year's coming up. I am looking forward to a new year. We will see how it goes. I'm sure you guys all are. So I'm gonna glue this down just so we see that. So normally what this is about is like, let's say you just wanna make a typical thing. So you're gonna cut the three layers. So if you had that layer, then your second layer would be the next thickest one. And then your third layer would be this little guy. And you glue them all down. And then you have these stripes, as you can see. Very cute. Um, you can, you know, turn one of them around like this. And then maybe keep this one like this. And now it looks a little more crosshatch. That's actually really cute. I like that. So um, when I turned it around, obviously the cut side is going to be facing up. Um, and I know people will ask me this because people always say, why don't you just turn it the other way? Like, because it doesn't work. So let me show you, here we go. If we just turn it, because you think, oh, it's gonna cross it and get back to the shape, it's the same, <laughs> okay? And I get questions like that. So that's why I'm showing it. I'm not insulting anyone's intelligence. It just doesn't work. So it has to be flipped, okay? See, it has to be flipped. So that backside. And um, so what I was planning to do is something like this and have that and then also now that's the backside one. This is the one that's nice and cut, you know, from the front side. I'm gonna put it back on here. And I know there's a lot of layers, but I thought it was really cool. So that's what I'm gonna do. There's a lot going on for your eyeballs here. And that's what I'm gonna do, okay? So I'm gonna go and just glue these down. And I'm not gonna waste people's time just showing glue, but basically we're gonna put glue on the back. Really, you know, just get some glue down. Really want the edges to stay, obviously. And so it is thick with the plaid. You can play with it all different ways. Um, you can only use maybe one of the strips, maybe two of the strips, you know, however you want to play with this. But I am going to stick that down. And then the next one, same thing, just putting glue all over the back. Pop it over the top of this one. Try to keep it neat because this paper isn't anything special. It's just recollection. So if I get glue all over the place, you'll be able to see it because it's going to dry clear. But I think this one dries a little bit shiny. So if you're afraid of that, use like something that dries matte or however, uh, depending on the paper you're using. And again, I'm gonna glue this one this way, then the next two, okay? I'll be back. Okay, I just turn it over to give it a really good press. It's not quite dry yet, but with this many layers, just be careful on that top layer. I think I got it a little bit wonky, but that's okay. Pretty cool. The other question I'll get 
and uh, as far as <laughs> reversing and all that, and it's not the biggest deal, it doesn't bother me, but um, is why don't you cut this upside down on the back of the paper so when you flip it, it's on the right side. It doesn't matter, it'll still, <laughs> <laughs> this thing is still direct the direction is the same and if you want to do that because like your paper has a color on it you know let me see if I have someone's knocking on my door I don't know why um so let's say you have this right you cut it out your little pink dots are going to be on the top right but now you want it in the other direction so you're going to turn your paper over so when you cut it when you flip it it'll be pink going in the other direction, right? In the direction like we want this other way. And that's fine, but the cut side is still here, you know what I'm saying, the nice side, and the cut is gonna be on this side. So there's no getting around that. And I, I know people ask me that all the time, and especially with like um, those diamond press dies that sometimes they only give you the one side, you're supposed to flip it. It doesn't matter. You guys can test it at home and you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> um, it works with some dies, but not always. It just depends on the style or what's going on with the die. But okay, that's what I did. It's a little busy, but I thought it was really cute. So that's what I came up with. Again, you can play with it however. I was thinking, you know, if you even want to cut some of the strips, you can actually like weave them, but that's a whole other thing. Cause at the end, and then if you top it off with something or just put another border, you're not gonna see that they have these little slits, you know, wherever you were trying to weave from. I think that'd be really fun. Okay. I'm going to take some Crafter's Companion um, marker paper or whatever, alcohol ink paper, or what, I think they call it something else. I, for, I forget now. I haven't done it. You, I haven't bought any in a long time because I bought like so much uh, like a year ago. Um, so I'm going to use this, but I want this centerpiece, right? And so what happens with this set, and I guess that's not available right now, but um, I'm sure I'll, you, know, you guys picked it up. There's plenty of people who might have it or have it on order at least. Um, this piece here. So this is an interesting step because this one here will cut this frame part out, right? So it's kind of interesting because in a way it's like, well, but it is different. This frame being cut out, like right here, I think. That looks about right. We'll leave this frame piece. This, and then you think, well, that cuts out the middle piece, but no, because then it have this ugly weird um, line around it, right? And you want this. So we have the other die that cuts that part. <laughs> And so you would want to obviously line it up nicely. I think it goes this way. And now you have the die that cuts this pretty piece out. And that's what I want. So I'm going to focus on cutting that out. Again, it has edge dies, you know, and things like that. You can do different stuff with. Actually, it's to cut these guys, but like on an edge. I'm going to stamp this really quickly, and I'll probably use a hybrid ink. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use my... Um, alcohol ink markers on this. And this is so big, you can probably just put the ink on it and bring your paper and smooth your hand over it like I do sometimes. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna remove the whole thing and use a precision press just in case I miss a spot, I can ink it up and do it again. This is a good size stamp. It smells so good. Ah, oh, photopolymer. Can't beat that. I think the only smell that beats that is the smell of, you know, Sharpie. <laughs> So if you're the type of person that likes that, ah, you love your photopolymer stamps. All right, let's put this here. And so I'm really focusing on that middle part. I don't really care about the rest of it. So I'll probably ink this up as well as I can. Just making sure that paper is there. Again, try to make sure you don't have air bubbles because you don't want this making it impossible to stamp because of an air bubble. So I'm just, I didn't even look, I just redid it. Okay. So the reason I'm like, why would somebody call me? I don't get a lot of phone calls. We like text messages. We like, you know, things like that. And everyone else is upstairs, so who would be calling? Maybe my mom. All right, let's see here. Oh, and spam callers, because that happens all the time. Okay, so I'm really inking this up. This is the first time we're using this, so, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't even know where to stop inking, so I'll ink the whole thing as much as I can in the center here. And I'm going to turn this so my paper's flat. Ooh. Again, I'm not trying to ink the whole thing because I only want that middle section. But it looks really pretty already. And it's probably overkill the way I like <laughs> really pressing it down. Yeah, it's a little bit dry. So let me do that again. Actually, it's probably fine because what I'm going to do is color it all. But again... Your photopolymer stamps always have like a a little um, dispersion layer to them. So you want to get that kind of off before you go to use them. And usually I do test stamping. 
Well, I say usually. You guys see what I do. I just try it. <laughs> but you're supposed to do a little test stamp. All right. Much better. Okay. So I'm going to give that a second to dry, even though it probably dries pretty quickly. I'm going to clean this off and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and color these in. I just picked out some colors. Hopefully they'll coordinate a little bit. These look the same now. <laughs> what is this? Bright pink blend, pink violet. That's funny. Don't they look almost the same? The little bands? Look at that. Anyway, all right, so I want the pink ones to be my hibiscus. These are the Tri Blend um, brush tips. Um, so I'm just going to come in and just like, okay, let's say this whole thing is pink. I have some hibiscus out in front. Actually, they're not mine. They're my neighbors. But, you know, it's split between our houses and their big bushes. They're so pretty. And they're the most beautiful pink. Not this bright. They're a little, a little duller. And I'm going to take that the darker color and put it right down the center here. Now you do a little bit at a time. If you want to do one petal at a time, you know, do however you like. I'm just taking some of that medium color and then go back with the lightest. And again, if you want it to look like it's bending, you would want to leave like a light area kind of towards in that right in here, which I totally forgot and I wanted to do. So we'll see. I might still be able to get that effect. Just so it makes it look like it's bent. Like curling back in the center area. So I'm going to go around and do that. Color the green things green. There's all kinds of flowers in here. Those like little irises or some kind of lilies and different things. So I will do my best <laughs> to color all this in. And I'll be back. Okay, I think I'm done. Try to add some bright, you know, other colors and different types of green. Not just green. I think plumeria is yellow, right? I guess it depends. Okay. I think I would need to make a an aperture because I'm afraid if I just line this up, you know, how well I'll line it up. So let me grab a scrap of paper. And I know the bottom of this thing has like, it'll make marks on my paper. So I try not to use this. <laughs> Even though I used to just sit it right on top of everything and use it. Oh, sorry guys. What is going on here? Stay. Okay. Since my tripod wants to move. For some reason. I'm just going to run this through a scrap piece of paper, set up my tripod a little better, and then we're going to use that as um, as an aperture. So basically I'm just going to stick this down, run this through, and I'll okay. be right back. Let's move this out of the way. Hopefully you guys can hold on. Mine's so close. I guess I closed up because of the coloring. Let me back up a little bit. And we're going to take this guy, trim this off. And I just made a little aperture so we can see through it and you kind of have a better idea where you're cutting. So we're not removing this. Um, let's see. Okay, that part looks good right there. It's more like this. You see I'm kind of lining up what's going on. How pretty does that look? How pretty would that be? <gasps> to color it and then put on top like a frame that works, you know what I'm saying, a piece of paper like this, and then that looks really pretty. Or maybe shaker it. <laughs> have this in the background and have this making a shaker on top. Okay, this looks really good. I like that. It has a very small white edge, but not too, too much. And then we wanna make sure this is in the right spot. And we need to tape this down. Now, I am using the marquee, so I might have to cut off some of this paper so that I know, you know, that it fits, right? Okay, I wanna make sure that's really on there. Let me see what happens when I put this in the marquee. Yeah, this very corner is kind of sticking out, so I'm just gonna cut that off. Not too much from over there. Whatever's just extra sticking out that we don't need. And I can use this next time I want to use this same um, stamp set, you know, I can use the same uh, mask. You just keep it in with your set and then just keep using it. But a lot of times I just make a new one every time. Aperture mask, whatever it is you want to call it. Ooh, I taped it down really, really well, so let's be very careful in removing this. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, look at that. Gorgeousness. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop this up on here somehow and then have a sentiment. But let me find what that sentiment will be. I'll be right back. I cut a piece of black, like shiny paper because I thought just to make it pop, 
And I don't know if I want the flowers like this or like this. I kind of like, because they're facing down, but then you think they would face up like this. I don't know. <laughs> We'll see what happens, but I do have that little black piece just to make it pop. I have a piece of the white stamping card. I think I'll stamp one of the sentiments. Um, you know, maybe I'm so grateful for you or something. I'll stamp it here. And then I'm gonna use my little dies and I have it in my little tonic kit here or set um, binder, should I say. And I think I'm just gonna use, huh. I was just gonna cut this middle one. But you know, there's lots of different things you can use on here. Or even this like movement. Oh, that's tough. Don't know what I want to use. This is cute too. <laughs> there's a lot of cute things on here. I'm like, this is cute, this is cute, this is cute. Uh, I'll stamp something and cut it out and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got quite a mess here now. Again, I haven't really decided which direction I want with these flowers. I guess up like this. I kind of like the all the black behind the little like stringy parts, but maybe we can still do that. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, we never thought about that one, did we? <laughs> a little more off to the side here. Um, maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, I'm gonna put it down in this area. Obviously, I'm gonna pop dot that. So, let me just glue this to this piece a little bit, and that's gonna have some time to mess around with it if you don't like where it is because of that slickness of that black paper. So I do like that. All right, so I'm gonna glue those together. I'm gonna hold it down so that they're nice and flat. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for these guys. And let me see if I have it that way. And the black is kind of at top. That means this one probably should be at the top too. I cut it out the same little die just so I can drop shadow this one too. And I'm just trying to see how I wanna drop shadow that. Probably in that direction. Well, it feels so nice to have a full bottle of glue in my hand. All right, okay, I'll come back when these are a little bit drier so we can finalize them. And that'll be it. Okay, guys, so I just put some foam on the back of this. And before I really stick it down, I wanna see where I wanna put this. And then this guy, I put a little bit less foam. Um, this is a higher foam than that first one, just so it's a little bit higher up, but also not here so I can layer it where I want over this part. And I think right there would be good. I'm not gonna push it down quite yet. So I'm gonna stick this down. And that's it. So thanks for watching guys. I'll have the links in the description box. Like I said, this one is sold out now, this stamp club set, but if you have it, maybe this will give you a little idea how to use it. And um, yeah, really fun layering. I mean, you can do so many things uh, with that. Okay, sorry, uh, I had some disturbances here, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, links will be in the description box and I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.